In this video, another C-sharp feature that is called the null coalescing operator that lets you get rid of a lot of lines of code by making your null check so much easier. Let's go check it out. Now to demonstrate how to use the null coalescing operator, um, I have started a file new um, terminal project basically. So in other videos, I'm using the try.net website, which is pretty cool, but it seems I was trying out this C sharp eight feature and it seems that it's stuck to C sharp seven. So it said that that wasn't supported. It wasn't a supported language feature. So, you know, I just dove into Visual Studio for Mac. Of course, this also works on Visual Studio for Windows and all the other things. Now here's just a simple console application. So it just out of the box says console right line, hello world. Um, but to get my point across, let's implement a very, very simple class. So let's say public class uh, person, here we go. And I'm going to put here a property. So I'm going to use this snippet. I'm going to type prop and then press the tab key. And it will bring me here this little snippet where I can just say string um, and I do tab again and I can enter the name here. So this is actually going to be name. So that's good. And now I have a person with a name. So now I can use that. Um, so the very simple thing that you can basically do is now say um, in this um, thing, let's say var person is new person. There we go. And I don't have a constructor. So let's just initialize it like this. And it has a name of, well, let's say null because that's convenient. Now, the thing that you can do here, whenever something is null, you can easily say like, if it's null, I want to assign something else. So let's see how that works. So we're going to say um, person dot name um, is person dot name, or if it's null, um, let's make it Gerald. So this, this is kind of a weird example maybe, um, because typically, you would, I will, I will make it a little bit clearer for you. So let me actually um, not make this person dot name, which makes it confusing. Let's just say var name. So I'm going to assign this to a different uh, name variable. I'm going to print out that. So let's do that. And then I'm going to say, Hey, this name, I'm going to make it person dot name, but whenever this is null, um, I'm going to make this Gerald. So this is kind of like, you know, if this is null, um, then I'm going to make it. So, so previously before this operator, you would write it like this, right? If person dot name um, is null, or maybe do it like this. I think you can do this too is null. Um, then var name is Gerald. Uh, well, you can't declare it here, of course, then you have to do it like this string name, there we go. Um, and so now this is this is the same thing as this. But this is you know, this list last thing here is written in one line, I think it's still clear. So a, a lot of this stuff is whenever you start um, combining these new operators, then it can get confusing. But I think this is still pretty clear, depending on the context. So this is this is two things writing the same way from three lines, maybe if you add the brackets, you know, then it's even, even more. Um, to to just one line. So that is pretty cool. Now just let's just remove this and see what this does. So whenever I run this, we expect to see um, Gerald, right? So run this and here in the integrated terminal down here, we should see Gerald, right? And whenever this is not null, so whenever this is already Gerald, here we go, and I run this again, then it will take this one, right? So it will take the first uh, thing here. So whenever this is not null, it will take this value. And whenever this is null, then it will take that value. Um, now, another cool thing that you can do with this is um, you can also I think this is in from C sharp eight is or maybe seven, it's around seven or eight, all this stuff. So whenever you're using like, you know, um, new project templates, then you should be able to use all of this. Um, so what is really cool is that you can also use it to throw an exception. So let me let me show you that. Um, I'm going to remove all of this, I'm going to make this gel, there we go. And I'm going to here say person dot name is null, which at this point is valid, right? I can, I can totally do that. And whenever I now say console dot right line, I think right line has a protection for null. Um, so whenever it sees you're trying to print null, it doesn't throw any exceptions, it will just um, skip over it and write nothing. So we should see nothing in the output right here. Um, there we go, there is nothing. And 
The cool thing is whenever you want to prevent this in like your property or something else, um, then we're going to format this a little bit nicer. There we go. And we can uh, make a private string name right here. And then we're going to say get. So this is another kind of um, shortcut that was implemented in some C sharp thing. You can just do this instead of adding the brackets and say return name and whatever. You can just say arrow thing name and it will return the name for you. Uh, but whenever you um, you know give a method body to to one of the properties, then you also have to do the other one. So what we can do here for the set is say name is value. So value is the incoming value, right? That's the value that we want to set this property to. And we can do the the null coalescing operator. So whenever this is null, we are not going to assign something else. But now we're going to say through new uh, what is it argument null exception. And I think this wants to it has a couple of overloads. But you should always tell the user which parameter is going to be null. So in this case, name of name, there we go. Um, so it's going to check if the value is null. If it's not, then it's just going to assign it to name and nothing nothing is changed. You will just be able to use this property as you would normally would. Um, but else, if this is null, then it's going to throw a new argument null exception. So if we go back to our code now down here, I'm creating this person with Gerald um, and we have this person name and I'm setting it to null and it should never get here because you know I'm throwing this exception, right? So whenever I run this, I now expect the exception to come up and there it is. Right, so can I drag this a little bit more into the screen? No, I can't. Um, but here you can see it, it gives you the exception value cannot be null parameter um, name. So that's good. But whenever I do this again, and I don't set this to null, but I don't I set this to um, still Gerald, there we go. And let me just run it again. It should just, you know, put in still Gerald here. Um, and nothing is the matter. It doesn't throw me any exceptions. So that is cool. Now, there's one other variant that um, I definitely know for sure that that came in C sharp eight, that is like the the kind of really um, no coalescing operator, I don't know, it might have a better name, but um, it is like the, the, the two question marks and the is sign. So the equal sign. Um, it's, it's this one, which is actually, you know, um, um, even more shorthand than the thing that we've just seen. So if we go back to my kind of verbose example, um, let's let's actually put this back for now because this we've seen this one get set. There we go, and remove that one. We don't need it anymore. Whoops, like that. So we just have the person with the name again. Um, and what we can now do, like set this back to null. Um, so you you know the really verbose thing before all of this goodness is like if person dot name is null. Um, then we can say person dot name is Gerald. There we go. So this works, right? So um, this is this is version one. Then version two was um, we can write this as um, person dot name. So we're going to assign it to the name itself again. Is person dot name. Um, and if that's no, then I'm going to assign it Gerald. So this is kind of like the same thing, but uh, with our new null coalescing thing, right? And I think here is actually a spoiler alert, use compound assignment. Well, there, there we have the name, we figured it out, the compound assignment. Um, and that is kind of like the third way to do it, which is person dot name. And then we can just do this is Gerald. So there we go. And this basically um, um, replaces this whole bit with like, you know, whenever the, the left part here is null, then we're going to assign this value. So this makes it even more compact and you don't need to write all that code because that's what we hate. So if I just, you know, comment this out for a little, um, let's do that and that and just keep this one. So I'm going to check if person dot name um, is null and then I'm going to assign Gerald. So we are going to expect to see Gerald here, right? Because this is null. So let's just run this one. And here we go. It's Gerald, right? So that works. And whenever I put in a name here, um, not Gerald, then I'm going to run this again. And now it should say not Gerald, right? Because this was not null. So I'm just going to keep this name. So that is a pretty powerful thing. You need to know how it works. And there is scenarios that you will come across um, definitely how to use this.
Um, so if you've watched my other video about the um, um, no conditional operator, you can combine it with that one too. It should pop up on your screen or you can find it down below in the video description, um, but you can use it for that too. So the way to do that is you can just you know put it all together. So let me actually remove all of this here and actually the person too. So the person is going to be null now. And then I have to specify that this is not a var, but this is a person else it won't know uh, which type it resolves to. So there we go, um, person is null. And now this is going to blow up, right? Because this is um, um, going to be, it's going to try to get this person and it's going to um, get the name from that, but person is null, so this is not going to work. Now, the way you can combine this basically is you can put that um, question mark in here. Again, you have to watch the other video to know exactly what's going on here, um, but this basically checks if this is null, and um, you can just continue here, right, with the name, and it doesn't care if this is null, it won't blow up, it won't give you that exception, it will just make this null too. Um, so now what we can do is put this together with this one, because if, if this is null, then this whole thing will be null, um, but in runtime, it, nothing happens. So it will see like, hey, if, if this part is null, then I'm going to say here, person is null, right? So there we go. And now we should see person is null because this whole thing um, resolves to null. But whenever I make this a new person again, and I'm going to give this a name, which is Gerald, and I'm going to run this again, this is not going to resolve to null, and it's going to be Gerald, right? So that's how you combine that whole thing, and you can make your code very much null proof, nullable, and still, I think, in a very readable way. Now, like I said, make sure that you don't, you know, combine all these C-sharp features that I'm telling you about, because you can, and it will syntactically be correct, and it will be working code, but it won't be that readable. So make sure to always have a good look at making that trade-off between writing good readable code and maintainable code and not making some kind of unreadable stuff going on that um, the person next to you or future you um, cannot really appreciate. So watch out for that one. Other than that, I hope you learned how to use the null coalescing operator that you like this video. And if you actually like this video, please click that like button. So, you know, YouTube knows that you actually liked it and other people can benefit as well. If you have just found this channel, thank you for watching and please consider subscribing subscribing to this channel if it helped. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any more questions or there's any other topics, C-sharp features or other things that you would like to see on my channel and I will make a video just for you. And for the rest, I will see you for my next video. Keep coding.